Alrighty, so, this is the video that I've really been wanting to make. Because this video will really highlight what I really love about the Apple Vision Pro. And what I think makes it leagues above the other headsets that are out there. At least in terms of my productivity and the way that I would use these headsets. I know that a lot of people complain about the fact that, you know, there's a lack of multiple screens, you can't have multiple Mac desktops up. They also seem to complain about the fact that you can't really move a window out of your Mac screen into virtual reality. But, in my opinion, the things that they're saying are kind of a moot point. Once you really just fiddle with the settings, and understand how at least I think Apple intends for people to use this. Because with my setup, I have such a large screen that is just for my Mac that I have space for everything that I would want on there. I can have my programming environment, I can have multiple terminals up, I can have like an API client up, and I have space for like my music app and more stuff. And not just that, obviously, because the Apple Vision Pro has apps built into it, and yes, that ecosystem is very small right now, but it will grow over time. I can have things like, I don't know, for example, my Git issues from GitHub on the left side in a tab on Apple Vision Safari. And then on the right side, I could have a different Safari, for example, things that I want to Google about whatever I'm programming. Or I could have it be an app that's a different terminal that's built into the Apple Vision Pro so that, you know, I can do that and have a separate client for whatever I want to test. I think that there's a lot to get into, and so I think that, honestly, it's time to just get started. Alright, so, first things first. Obviously, I have my MacBook in front of me, so there's a button that shows up above my screen that says Connect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit that, and my physical screen will turn black, and then, It'll render a virtual version of my MacBook screen in front of me. Now, here's where the first thing I think goes wrong for a lot of people. A lot of people will leave this, this virtual display in the default resolution of the MacBook screen. And I think that's a mistake. You see, what I've actually done here is, if I make this a little bigger, and I go into my system preferences. What you will notice is that when I go down to the displays section and I show all resolutions, the first thing you'll notice is that I'm actually not using one of the default resolutions. I'm using the 5120 by 2880 resolution. This is what gives me so many pixels, and this gives me what you see here, where yes, the top bar is a little small. But I now have a lot of space to work with. Just to kind of demonstrate how this works, here's an example. I'm going to pull up my VS Code, and obviously this is not the normal size. The normal size is this. Yes, it's a little small, but that's the whole point of scaling in apps. It allows me to just hit Command Plus, and now, from pretty much any reasonable distance from this screen, this text is readable. And I can obviously do whatever editing I need using the keyboard, the physical keyboard, of the MacBook. The other thing that I really like to do is, now that I've got my thing in 5K, I just make this screen as big as I can. Because now, everything is right here in front of me, and even with my VS Code up, and it being really big, I still have so much space to work with. I can fit my terminals here, I can have my music up here, I can have an API client up here if I really want. And I still have yet more space in this corner. Another really cool thing is that, yes, I know, there are apps that are built in for the Vision Pro. So all I have to do is just click the digital crown, pull up my home menu, and for example, go to Safari. With Safari up now, I can just move my Safari over to the side, and now you can see I've got my Git repo up here. And that's all I need. Because now I can go into the issues, and I have every single issue that is on this repo up. And I can tell which ones are assigned to me, they all have their labels, and this is in a nice, compact format. 
Another one of the real apps that I really like is an app called Termius. So as you can see, I have an app here called Termius. If I open Termius, you can see that I can pull up an SSH, SFTP, whatever I want to a machine. And if I connect to it, it acts like a normal SSH prompt. Here's where it really becomes crazy. I can actually control this using my keyboard on my Mac. So as you can see, I'm typing here with my physical Mac keyboard, but it's showing up on here. So I don't have to worry at all about, for example, the virtual keyboard, which we all know is kind of unusable, unfortunately. Now, I'm sure you might be like, okay, well, that's all fine and dandy, but what does your normal work actually look like? Like, what is my workflow? And here, I actually have it in front of me. What I normally do is I actually scale my environment all the way up. Now, I personally actually really like the Yosemite environment, so this is what I've chosen as basically my default. And what I do is I have this up, and I have a Safari to my right, usually with whatever I need to Google. For example, how to use the GORM library to delete records. And on my left, I have, as I mentioned before, my GitHub with my issues or the commit log, whatever I need at the moment. In the center screen, this is just, as I mentioned, the 5K, as big as it can be, Mac virtual display. In the center at the bottom, I usually have my IDE. So in this case, it's VS Codium. I then usually have whatever terminals I need to use to the right and to the left. And then I have my music in the top left corner. Hi, Editor Aiden here. I will note that my music app, which is Tidal, has not been ported to Apple Vision Pro yet. But once it is, my plan is to actually stream music directly from my Apple Vision Pro to my AirPods Pro with what I've supposedly heard is supposed to be lossless audio. And right above, I have the API client if I need it. So right now, I'm using it because I'm doing API work. Alright, well, that's enough of me kind of just showing off what I do. But I think the really interesting part is to actually kind of show you it in action. So what's going to come up next is just a series of clips from me actually working on this project that you see here and doing all of my deployments and my testing and solving issues and looking up stuff and hopefully that gives you a nice glance into how this kind of workflow actually really works well for me. All right, and quickly before we actually just start looking at the clips of me programming, I just thought it would be interesting to show you guys a clip that my dad took. Um, that it kind of shows really how big the Mac virtual screen can be and just how much space you really have. Because I feel like a lot of people underestimate that and they always seem to say, ooh, there's not enough space, you know, on the Mac screen to get everything I want done. But I really don't subscribe to that and I think that this kind of shows why. Oh, and one last thing that I actually forgot to mention previously. I found out that if you put your laptop or keyboard, whatever you're using, on your lap, it actually makes the experience much more enjoyable because you always know where your keyboard is and it makes it a lot easier even if you have the environment fully enabled the way that I do. Can you in space put out your hands to approximately where you think, you're, where you think the size of the screen is? Like, like where? That. Right about there. And then what, what are the extents of the screen? I gotta go back to even show that. Yeah, that's ridiculous, right? Yeah, that's how big my screen is in VR. And it's set to what, 5K? 5K. Max size. So this first clip here is me debugging my project because I had realized that something was wrong. I checked the database and a bunch of data was left in a state that it shouldn't have been given that I had just restarted the program. After realizing that something else was probably wrong, I actually checked the file system and realized that I was completely out of storage once again because my log files were way too big. After fixing the storage problem once again, I realized that it also encountered some other bugs and so I pulled up the repository on GitHub 
using the Apple Vision Pro Safari in order to go look at my issues to see if they'd been documented already. At this point, I realized that my configuration for Log Rotate, which I had tried and clearly failed to implement properly, was broken. So I wrote down what I had already tried in a Git issue, and then I googled the Log Rotate documentation using my other copy of Apple Vision Safari, and kind of realized that I was being really stupid. And as it turns out, having conflicting configuration settings is a really bad idea. Who could have ever guessed that that would be the case? I also documented a new bug that I had found with my code after perusing through the database while trying to figure out what was originally wrong with my system to begin with. At this point it was pretty late, and I was actually going to go eat dinner, so I just restarted the program to regenerate the database because I figured that by the time that I was back, it would either be completely broken and I'd have to fix it, or I could, you know, just let it fully regenerate the database overnight and all would be good. So the next thing I did is I essentially just created a new issue for a fix that somebody had wanted. And then I just wrote a commit detailing what I had fixed in this programming session, and I figured that would be good enough. I will note that actually, not once during this entire programming session did I ever actually take off the Apple Vision Pro. I had it on the whole time, and it was actually really easy to kind of just lock in and get my work done. And that's all I got! Hope you enjoy, thanks for watching. I hope that this gives you a very good idea as to how I think that the Apple Vision Pro should be used for programming, and why I think that this has significantly improved my experience in general, because I can take this device on the go, travel anywhere, and in virtual reality, I'll have this massive screen that otherwise I couldn't imagine possibly carrying with me. Because in the past, what I've done is I've actually carried around three of these 4K OLED screens that are roughly maybe this big. And yes, it's a nice solution, but it's very bulky. The, the, the fact that I have to carry so many cables and so much weight in terms of the screens was definitely very limiting. And also the fact that I can't really use that with something like my MacBook, because my MacBook doesn't really have the performance to be able to power that many screens simultaneously, and just in general, having multiple screens, multiple small screens, at least in my opinion, is not nearly as usable as having just one giant one. And that's what I think this really improves. Obviously, you know, if you're in a stationary environment, you've got like an office space that's dedicated, you could always get like one of those, you know, one of those massive 60 plus inch 8K OLED TVs. And yes, those are amazing. There's no doubt about that. But there's just something about being able to travel with something that works so similarly that I think that you can't really beat. Anyways, that's all I got. Thanks for watching, and have a good one. I'll see you all next time.